Okay, hello everyone. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, I'm Zheng Fu, uh, a postdoc working with Philip at LSE. Today, I'm going to talk about the critical soil moisture threshold of planar water stress. Uh, this is a critical soil moisture threshold of planar water stress is the break point when uh, evapotranspiration starts to decrease. As we can see here, the X axis is uh, soil moisture, well, the y axis is the evaporative fraction, which is the fraction of energy reserved by the plants. And uh, this energy is transformed into evapotranspiration. In theory, this is a critical soil moisture threshold between the relationship of evaporation and the soil moisture. What it determines the existence is limited, it is energy limited or uh, soil moisture limited. So, when the soil moisture uh, decreases, the, the, this threshold is a point at which, at which uh, the plant starts to transpire less because of uh, water stress when the soil moisture keeps decreasing. Knowing this critical soil moisture threshold is very important because the plant will uh, suffer from, suffer from uh, water stress when the, the soil moisture is below this threshold and even die. If, if the soil moisture is always it's always lower than this threshold, this framework will uh, for this threshold is uh, well understand well understood. But uh, in reality, in reality, we don't know what is the critical value of the soil moisture from observational data. For us, system models different. Uh, us system models show the show the different uh, relationship between evaporation and the soil moisture at, at the same area as we can see in this figure. So different earth system model show the different soil moisture threshold. These differences uh, from uh, earth system models contribute to the uncertainty of predicting a future climate water sources and the land carbon sink. For, for observations, uh, ICOs and the global fast network have collected many fast power sites in the world. This fast towers, this fast tower site mirrors both the latent heat fast and the sensible heat fast, providing the opportunity to us to quantify the threshold using the relationship between uh, evaporation and soil moisture. For example, here we uh, we can use the soil dry downs. We can focus on the soil dry downs. Soil dry down means the uh, the long periods with no rain. For example, during the dry summers, we can see here uh, here the y axis is the soil moisture. And the uh, x x is the days after rain. So after a uh, rainfall, the soil moisture keeps decreasing for several consecutive days. The many the many uh, soil dry downs at this site, and that can be used to detect the soil moisture threshold. So here we calculated the evaporation at this site during the dry down and uh, look at the relationship between the evaporation and the soil moisture. And then we can quantify this threshold based on the relationship between EF and the soil moisture. So for for each uh, fast tower side, we can collect the all soil dry downs and quantify the threshold. During the dry down, uh, we can see the evaporation of uh, this green line. Uh, the evaporation remain remains relatively stable at the first and the, but then decrease when soil moisture become low, then uh the then a uh, given threshold. So we can look at the evaporation and soil moisture relationship at each site and quantify the threshold. But the observations, uh, these observations are still limited because uh there are only few sites in some areas like tropical areas. And currently, we uh, there is no observed global map of evaporation. So we needed to consider other methods to get the global map of soil moisture threshold. Another method has been reported to detect the soil moisture threshold is using the relationship between uh, land surface temperature uh, diurnal amplitude. We can see here uh, the blue line uh, means the soil moisture uh, during the dry down, soil dry down. Well, the green line means the uh, means uh, the evaporation. And the red line means the uh, land surface temperature uh, diurnal amplitude, uh, DLST. So increasing the land surface temperature uh, diurnal amplitude in water limited stage 
can reflect the increased partitioning of the surface energy towards to a uh, sensible heat flux. Therefore, the land surface temperature diana amplitude, DST, uh, is uh, uh, positively or positively or positively associated with the sensible heat flux, but negatively associated with the uh, evaporation and soil moisture. So during the dry down, uh, the DLST uh, keeps stable as fast when the soil is high and then uh, increase, increases with the soil moisture when soil moisture is below this threshold. So here we plus using the first tower to quantify the threshold uh, using the both uh, EF and the soil moisture method and the data ST uh, soil moisture methods. As you can see here, the panel A showed the uh, uh, the threshold using the EF and the soil motion method. And the panel B showed the uh, threshold using the uh, DS, DST uh, and the uh, soil motion method. On this side, we can see uh, this, this threshold from these two methods are very closely. The threshold is about uh, 0 0.19 for both the EF and soil motion method and the uh, DST and the soil motion method. And then we did this uh, the same analysis for all sites and compared the threshold from these two methods across all fast tower sites. We found the uh, the threshold estimated from the DST method is uh, similar to uh, that of uh, EF soil EF method. So this method the DST so ratio shape can be used to quantify the uh, soil moisture threshold. Okay, so to map the global threshold, we use the three soil moisture products from satellite observations, including uh, SMAP, 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 SAV, SMAP, IB, and smooth IC soil moisture. Their uh, temporary resolution is one to three days. For land surface temperature data, we use the, uh, the Copernix, uh, uh, land surface temperature and the modest uh, land surface temperature. So it right down uh, it's defined as at least four or five consecutive of all passes for smooth and uh, smooth soil moisture respectively. respectively. So here is the distribution of global uh, DST and the soil dry downs and the, and the number of soil dry downs. We can see here the global pattern of DST from the MODIS data are much well with that of uh, Copernix uh, LST data. For the uh, number, of, uh, number of soil dry downs, we can see these three soil moisture products consistently showed the global patterns of the number of dry down per year. The areas with the most, uh, with the most uh, dry downs are Central America, uh, Argentina, uh, Central Europe and uh, the Eastern Australia. So using this soil moisture and the DLST during the dry downs, we, we can quantify the soil moisture hold for each grade at globally. And we can see here the this is three soil moisture datasets, SMAP IB, uh, SMAP SCIV, and the smooth IC, and the two land surface, land surface temperature data, Copernix and the MODIS. Consistently showed the consistently showed the uh, special patterns of global uh, critical soil moisture threshold. For each grade, we can estimate the threshold and its standard error. So uh, this is three uh, soil moisture data and the two land surface land surface data combined with the the three uh, threshold estimates, which combined. Uh, uh, yeah, the 18 threshold uh, is uh, assemble members, the median threshold and uh, its uncertainty across this assemble uh, can providing the uh, can provide this global mapping of the critical soil moisture threshold based on a uh, symbol of different satellite observations. And we can see uh, the low soil moisture threshold is mainly uh, distributed uh, in dry land system like the western US. And the, the or, or, or uh, the eastern Brazilian and South Africa and the Australia. Well, the high soil moisture hold is mainly uh, occurred in winter in winter region. 
such as the tropical or rainforest. And then we also compiled the, this uh, satellite uh, derived threshold in the global map with the first tower derived threshold. We can see here the y axis is the flow ammonia threshold uh, from the satellite observations, while the x axis is the threshold using the uh, first tower data using a, a DST method or using the EF flow ammonia method. We, could, we found the the satellite derived the soil monitor hold is comparable to that uh, estimated from first tower measurements, although their footprint are different. And then we also look at the threshold across different uh, biomass. We found that the dry shrublands of the lowest threshold, while it is the, the highest in, uh, in the tropical forests, existed in dry climate like the dry shrubland, dry grassland and the dry savanna uh, have the lower threshold than uh, the uh, temperature, temperature boreal and the uh, tropical uh, climate. Forests have the higher threshold than that of no forest existence, like shrubland, dry grassland, and savannas. The uh, threshold in cropland is crucial for the yield, but uh, the, the threshold in cropland is also uh, impacted by the by our man management. And we found that the rice have the health, health, uh, have the health, uh, health threshold value compared to maize, uh, potato, and uh, wheat. And wheat. This is uh, so threshold values are also tend to be uh, higher with the increasing irrigation, but uh, but this threshold, uh, threshold value in cropland tend to decline as the function at the fraction of cropland increases. We can also see there are uh, large variations in, in, in the soil moisture threshold, even in the same biomass, in, indicating there are other uh, factors to determine the values. So we analyzed the soil rotation and the climate factors using uh, the reading forest to understand the, the drivers of the global variability of soil moisture threshold. We found that these predict predictors can explain 74% uh, of the global variation in, in the soil ammonia threshold. And we found the area DT index, uh, leaf, area, leaf area index, and the, the sand diffraction contributing most to the global variation of the threshold. The area, area DT index is defined as the ratio of NU precipitation to uh, potential evapotranspiration. So the, the higher LDT index means the, the, the wet climate. The partitional dependency plot found that the, the threshold increases uh, considerably with the high uh, LDT index and the leaf LDT index, but, reduce, but, but uh, the threshold reduces at the high sandy fraction and, uh, and how the leaf nitrogen. In addition, we found that the, uh, the threshold showed a positive dependence to uh, show the uh, positive dependence on the precipitation frequency, but the negative uh, dependence on the uh, global short wave radiation. So, okay, we, we have the global map of the soil moisture threshold and uh, know it's the main continuing factors. So what can we do using this uh, global uh, soil moisture threshold? And this global map, Global map of soil moisture can help us understand to what extent exi what extent existing uh, water limited. For example, uh, here to explore how many days in a year that existence uh, water limited, we calculated the fraction of time when soil moisture is below threshold, defined as the, the ratio of the number of Days when with the soil moisture is below threshold to the total observed daily soil moisture in a year. And, and we assume that, that the global threshold is unchanged with time or has low temporal variance. So, this we can see here the satellite uh, observation soil moisture found that there are a larger fraction of the larger fraction of time when soil moisture is below threshold in the in the and the water limit and the water limit existence, such as the uh, Western US, uh, South Africa, and the, the Australia. 
We also did the same analysis using the EIA file reanalysis re soil moisture data. And we found the magnitude of the fraction of time below soil moisture threshold from the EIA file data is smaller than that of the satellite observations. However, the global pattern of the fraction of time below soil moisture threshold calculated from the EIA file is similar to that of satellite observations which give us confidence that we can explore the, the long-term trend of the, 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 the fraction of time when so is below a uh, threshold using the IR5 data. So here using the IR5, so from the 1979 to 2020, we found that the trend in the fraction of time when so is below threshold has been uh, increasing over the past uh, 40 years indicating that tertiary system is shifting more, more days, more time toward, toward the water limitation. During the seven, uh, seven, uh, 1979 to uh, 2020, the increasing, the increasing rates of fraction of time when soil moisture is below threshold has uh, uh, it's increased four to seven days per decade. So uh, globally, uh, the faster increases the fraction of time, not only of course in the dry land existing like the Western US and the South Africa, but also uh, distributed in the sun, uh, wet regions like the Southeastern China. In conclusion, uh, we showed that the satellites although the land surface temperature and the soil moisture can be used to map global soil moisture hold. Low threshold values dominate the dry land existence, while the high soil moisture hold values across the tropical rainforests. The global variation of threshold in natural existence is most explained by aridity index, leaf area index, and the soil texture. But the threshold in the copland is also affected by crop types, irrigation, and the expansion areas. And last, the global distribution of the fraction of time spent in water limit stage has been nearly increased during the past 40 years. Okay, that's it. Thank you for your attention. I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, any questions? Uh, well, thank you for the presentation. Um, I have two questions. The first one is, uh, if I understand well, um, the soil moisture um, that is measured from satellite is only for the topsoil, and I would like to know how it might affect the results. And the second one is, um, uh, do you think it would be possible for um, this um, uh, data crit to evolve over time? I mean, uh, have you checked if uh, you um, uh, try to um, uh, assess that value um, uh, in different time period. If you find different value, it might evolve and with an adaptation of vegetation through time. Yes, yeah, this is a very good two questions. For the first one, um, uh, we know the, the, the soil motion in the deep layers uh, is the low passes and uh, it correlated well with the surface soil moisture. And uh, the recent uh, studies have showed that the surface soil moisture of the same scale to identify the uh, evapotranspiration regions to uh, the same as to the, to the uh, deep soil moisture layer. So, so here we only uh, use the uh, surface soil moisture from the satellite data, but we can also do the same using the uh, the deep soil moisture layer from the EIA five products. And for the second question, uh, yes, uh, yes, the threshold may be changed with the, the time. Um, you know, for the satellite observations of uh, for this map only covered the recent five years, so we cannot test the uh, the the temperature change of soil the soil threshold with the with the time. But uh, we test uh, at one bus tower site uh, and we can see here uh, at the different uh, at the, as we can see in this figure that we found the threshold do not uh, uh, do not change much with the time 
using the fast tower data. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I have just one question. Did, did you know or can you consider the soil wetness index instead of uh, all your measurements and uh, to test if it is uh, working or not? I don't know if you know the soil wetness. It is no. from uh, Meteo France, but it can be extended from other places. No, we, we don't uh, calculate the soil water con index. It just covered, it just gives you the percentage of uh, available water considering <coughs> the soil and uh, the, the weather condition. It's like the soil water potential? Or? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we try with water potential. Yeah. Yeah, we're trying to calculate the soil water potential based on the, 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 uh, the soil equation, but you know, this equation to to transfer the soil moisture into soil water pressure, bring to very large uncertainty to estimate the to estimate the soil water pressure. And the validity index is linked to the body precipitation. Yeah, yeah, it's a P over P. Yeah, you, you show that it works very well for evapotranspiration. Okay. Uh, what about respiration? Did you uh, try to find uh, some tipping point uh, in soil respiration during the dry downs, or are they too short uh, to see any collapse of some microbes when the soil is drying out? Um, for the uh, soil transpiration? Respiration, soil uh, ecos uh, or ecosystem respiration. Uh, Existing uh, ex evapotranspiration. No, respiration. Respiration. Oh, respiration. Oh no, we, we here we don't know, don't consider the, the respiration. Uh, uh, Maybe we should try because there is a strong soil moisture response, but I don't know on which time scale and if you see any kind of uh, breaking point of soil respiration during a, a drought. Huh? Yeah. So, so we can. We can use the fast tower data of the uh, existing respiration to say how the soil respiration responds to the, the drawdown when the soil moisture decreases. 